Lev Shastov was a Christian existentialist philosopher born in Kiev. He is mostly known because of his philosophy of despair. Yeah, I know, it's kinda edgy, but yeah, it's forgivable. <clears throat> Encompassing themes is the absurd, despair, suffering, and death itself. However, Shastov is not the kind of philosopher that can be understood in systematic ways, as he developed all his philosophy in a fragmentary aphoristic writing style, presenting abrupt arguments instead of a linear structure of argumentation. Some of his most important influences were Kierkegaard, Dostoevsky, Nietzsche, Pascal, and Plotinus. And Shastov's works always permeated these philosophers and theologians, presenting a deep and concise critique on idealism, rationalism, and his contemporary development of metaphysics and logic as well, proposing another approach to philosophy, suggesting the opposite of all that these philosophical currents have suggested. Philosophy must not out to be problem solving, but to demonstrate inconstancies and rational inquiries in logical abstractions. Shastov indicated an escape to abstract ideas and logical necessity through possibility and affirmation beyond these Latinist European philosophical principles, responsible for exhaustion, for the loss of meaning and therefore loss of life. Reason and necessity are seen as opposed to life, since these principles generalize and categorize it as pure abstraction, corrupting the very vaga and energy of reality, thereby despair inevitably replaces meaning. Shastov realizes the very realm of the thing in sich, or of the thing in itself, yeah, that thing from Kantian philosophy as an eternal antithetical exercise, as always opposing to meaning, since only becoming aware of the ugliness of reality makes possible the achievement of freedom. Thus, he displays necessity, reason, and even morality as idols, and lunges at the limitative and restrictive Western philosophical tradition. He traces connections between Dostoevsky's theology and Nietzsche's critique on Western philosophy in his work Dostoevsky and Nietzsche, The Philosophy of Tragedy, principally displaying both the post-Siberian regeneration of convictions and the revaluation of all values as affirmation of life. Shastov affirms possibility and freedom as well as Dostoevsky and Nietzsche did, the former by exalting the tragic through repentance as the possibility of a mystical relation between man and the godman, and the latter by the abdication of human values as mere logical abstraction, and his understanding of the tragic as being an elevated task, a synthesis of opposite energies. Contradiction and collision are central in both Dostoevskian and Nietzschean works, and human antinomical nature finally gains notoriety in philosophy. Antinomy is affirmed in Shastov's philosophy. In this work, he condenses the very nature of the tragic as beyond logical exhaustion and abstract dead reasoning. Dostoevsky characters achieve freedom through humiliation, punishment, and repentance, and Nietzsche argues on the possibility of the Dionysian sphere, both making tragedy possible. The affirmation of life, seen both as the regeneration of convictions and the revaluation of all values, becomes possible through the very human dimension the dimension of the subject. There is possibility within despair, struggle, and death. Shastov praises Dostoevsky's underground man not only because of his unconformity with rational egoism and utilitarianism, but also because of his process of regeneration, symbolizing Dostoevsky's on. The death of ideas and the departure of idols such as rationality, science, and necessity or the path for the possibility of despair, which is exactly freedom. Revelation and Resurrection I quote, Shastov's philosophy has a religious nature. Philosophy is not academic speculation, but a matter of life and death. End quote, by Nikolai Berdyaev.
When all idols fall and only despair remains, possibility arises. Revelation and resurrection become central to Shasta's thought, recurrent in works as Apotheosis of Groundlessness, Kierkegaard and the Existential Philosophy, and Athens and Jerusalem. Here, life affirmation gains meaning through faith, the fundamental transformation of convictions. The movement of faith unveils possibility beyond the rational and abstract, affirming the sphere of the unthinkable and the unspeakable, thereby subjectivity provides the possibility of despair, which leads to revelation. Philosophy must not come forth nor prescribe solutions, mainly because she only serves limitations and restrictiveness. Thus, philosophy must recognize its limits, and when she gets there, she commits suicide, giving voice to an elevated and superior salvific truth, to a mystical revelation beyond mere abstractiveness that philosophy cannot comprehend. Such as Plotinian awakening of the soul and Kierkegaardian leap of faith, Shastovian resurrection means revaluation and regeneration. Shastov concludes that faith is freedom and revelation, the possibility of the impossible and the integral experience of truth. Thereby, philosophy must not be understood as an external constructive exercise, but an inner doing, an internal regeneration through struggle. The kingdom of God, as it is written, is attained through violence. The philosophy of despair is a passage for unattainability, for the mystical comprehension of Christ's incarnation and its revelation to humanity.